I can't get any work done. Howard, where are you going? No, you are not. You are going to take this baby. I can't put it back out in the, I can't put it in the yard. It keeps running out in the road. Okay, you, well, you need to come get it before it starts crying again. I am in the middle of a very important business adventure here. You are not being supportive, and if you ever want to get that fence fixed, you need to be supportive. Okay, we are not going to get the money to do it. You could stand up to your boss and ask for a raise, but I don't know why you won't. Take this baby. You are not going bowling. Put that bag down. Unless you want to use it to tote this back over to Ellen's house. Which one is this? Which one is it? Is this, is this Charlene? Or Carlene? Darlene? No. Marlene? I, I, can't, I can't keep up with all their kids. They need to name it. They need to name it too many. Because they got too many kids. Now, can you just take... Look, walk it back over there. Ellen is not at home, but I, one of the older ones can take it. She's going to get a permanent wave in her hair. Take this baby. Come around here. I don't have a pacifier for it, but I was trying your pipe here. I tried to get... It won't take the pipe, but I thought it might like to have something, you know, in its mouth, just like a pacifier, you know... Maybe, maybe try that here. Here, try it. Take the pipe. Now take, take this baby. Okay, it's not your fault. See, I have, I have a business I'm trying to run here, and I, <clears throat> I can't hold a baby and do this. Okay, look, that's why we have dogs. Now take this, take this thing, take it, take it. Thank you. Take. We're running across the street. Okay, I got work to do. Well, if you can't find anybody to take it, then you're just going to have to babysit. No, not you. Not you, Arlene. I got a baby over here. It is not my baby. I'm not a... I don't have any... Arlene, I don't have any children. You know that. I'm trying to get Howard to take this baby. One, one of Ellen's kids has just come over here, and, well, it was in the road, and I figured I better go get it. I don't know which one it is. I believe it's Charlene. How we're saying it's Marlene. How can you tell what the birthmark is where? I'm not looking there to see. Just It doesn't matter which, which whichever one it is. Just go see if anybody's at the house. One of the older kids is bound to be there. Now, Arlene, look, I'm actually glad, to, I'm glad you're on here. I was about to call you, as a matter of fact. Okay, you, I hear you, brother, back there. Why is he coughing like that? Has he got the croup? Don't don't let him come to church with that. Now, you remember what happened when, well, when Miss Hattie got the croup that time? She was sick for a long time. Yeah, and she fell over a pew, and I never heard the end of it. You can't make sure he'd stay. You stay out of church with that cough, because I don't want Miss Hattie falling falling down like that again. It was apocalyptic. Okay. No, I have something I want to tell you. I am not selling anything today. Yeah, you don't even have to make up an excuse. I am selling something that is not even something I have to sell. It is a vacation. It is relaxation. Now, that's something everybody wants. I'm sure you do. You can enjoy the... I am not reading a script. You can enjoy... Three fantastic nights in the villa of your choice. Well, it's, it's part of a, a new exciting opportunity, Earlene. I am offering you the chance to stay in some of the most exotic locations on earth. Yes, and it's, let me tell you, let me tell you about it. It's very exciting. You can, you can travel the world. They have loca listen, they have locations in Tulsa, yeah, and let's see, Des Moines, yeah, uh, Poughkeepsie. You can go to some of the most exciting places on earth, and it's only $49. Well, I bet you are wondering 
Gertrude, how can you offer me such exciting trips for such a low price? Well, that is the that is the excitement of this company. It is called Trippin' Hard. And what you do is it sets you up in some of the most exciting motels that the USA has to offer. Well, that's the thing. You that's the hard part is you have to get yourself there. So if you think if you think your Plymouth is up to it, you could go up to Poughkeepsie for three exciting nights. Now let me see where you would are you interested in Poughkeepsie or would a more exotic location like Des Moines be better for you? You're not interested in any of those. Well, you do not have a sense of adventure and I feel sorry for you. But if that's how about your brother? Is his neuralgia up and up? acting up again. Is it the neuralgia? The bursitis. I'm so sorry to hear that. That is most unfortunate. Um, yeah, okay. Well, if, if y'all don't want anything, can y'all get off the phone? You know, maybe talk about your ailments another time. In a way, I think you should be grateful for the ailments because it seems like y'all don't ever have anything else to talk about. You never know anything about the neighborhood. I mean, you're lucky you got me. I always have my eyes peeled for things going on around here. I think it's important to be aware. You need to be aware of your, your surroundings, y'all. You need to know what your neighbors are up to. It is not being nosy. Now, I, 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 I take offense to that. That is not being nosy. That is being a concerned neighbor. Well, then I guess you don't know what happened to John and Deanna, do you? No, you don't, because you're not a concerned neighbor. And now I don't feel like telling you. Don't bring that baby back in here. You turn around and go right back out. I don't care if the door is locked and they're not letting you in. You can't leave it on the porch. He's trying to leave the baby on the porch. It'll just crawl back across the street and try to come over here. Just give it give it a Coca-Cola or something. Put, use, try the pipe. It'll work just like a pacifier. It's the same thing. Don't put any tobacco in it. It's empty. Just give it the give it the pipe. You pet it on the head. Isn't that what you com comfort a baby? You just pet it. You just pet it or, I don't, I don't know, brush it or something. I am never going to get anywhere with this. No, I'm not telling you about John and Deanna because you're being hateful. No, I don't care. You have what? You made some of that fudge. Well, I'll think about it. How much do you have to offer? A half a pan? How big is the pan? Well, that's tempting, I have to say. Um, would you be willing to hear more about tripping hard? No. Well, then I'm not willing to tell you about John and Deanna. Now, y'all get off the phone. Okay? Y'all discuss your aches and pains another time, all right? Why don't y'all just get together and talk about it sometime? We meet up at the coffee shop. Why are you always tying up the line? Well, get off of here. Y'all both hang up. I'm going to give you just a second, and I want y'all to get off. Is it not working? I don't need it to start crying. Give it some candy or something. Can you give them candy at that age? I, try the Coca-Cola. Put it in a bottle. We don't have a bottle. Well, I don't, I don't know. Like, give it give it something. Sit there and pet it for a little bit. Okay. I have some important phone calls to make, so you are going to have to keep that thing quiet. Linda! Hey, it's me. It's Gertrude. How are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much. Am I interrupting anything? Oh, you were about to vacuum? Well, then you're probably glad I called. Give you an excuse not to. Oh, you don't like having a messy house? I totally understand. I won't take up much of your time. Now, I... No, I'm not trying to sell you any Avon today. You need any? You know anybody that does? Because you know I can always help you out. We've got those atomizers back in. I know how much you like those. They're only $1.81 right now. 
you know, maybe some face cream. Not that you need it because you have a beautiful face. I love your face. I was just telling Howard what a pretty face you have. I was too. I did not say it looked like she got hit with a baseball bat. No. Howard's over here telling me just how beautiful you are. You look like Betty Davis. Yes, you do. When she, yes. I mean that every, every bit of that. Now, no, I am not selling anything today, but if you need Avon, let me know. Okay. I am selling an opportunity to go on some exotic trips. Now, that sells itself. It doesn't even involve any selling on my part. You what? <gasps> Hold on a minute. Did you hear about Carol? Who told you that? Are you? Did she really? No, that was not in the paper. Now, that something like that should have been in the newspaper. Did you know that? Oh, you didn't hear what she just said. Hold on a minute. Carol got out of jail. Was it on purpose? I got, I'm about to drop the phone. Carol broke out of jail. That's frightening. Well, you know, she, I, well, they said she killed some people. Do you think maybe she's coming back here? You know, I don't think she likes me too much. Her Harold, Howard, I could die. Well, I don't, I don't know. Do you think she'd come back here? Why are you smiling? I'm distracted now. No, I had not heard. Why did you not call me? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, that, that, that's, that's certainly disturbing, but, um, Surely she wouldn't come back to this neighborhood. I mean, this is this is like the scene of a crime. Supposedly. I mean, didn't you see what they were doing over there? They were digging up her backyard. And they weren't building a swimming pool. They, I heard they found a whole graveyard back there. And they think it was her. That's why she's in jail. Or was in jail. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I suppose they're tracking her down with dogs and stuff, aren't they? I mean, you know, like in the movies, they go out into fields and they have dogs and they're they're yelping and they'll find her. I mean, she can't go far. Okay. Well, this is very disturbing. It's, it's going to be all I can do to get through my little talk here. Um... Harold, we have to, Howard, we have to make sure we lock the doors. Okay. Do we have locks? Do our doors lock? We, if they do, we need to make sure to lock them. Because I, I don't want her coming here. I know she has bigger fish to fry, but there's nothing wrong with being safe. I do not think the whole world revolves around me. Did you hear that? He thinks that I believe the whole world revolves around me. Like the only reason she bre she break out of jail is to come get me. It may not be the only reason, but it might be one of those things like, well, I was in the neighborhood, so I decided to hack her to pieces. You need to quit smiling, and that smile is starting to worry me. Howard's grinning over there. What are you grinning at? Looks like a mule eating briars. Why are you grinning? <sighs> I've done forgot what I called. Why did you not tell me? Linda. Okay. Well, we need to be extra careful. We need to be looking around. And there's other weird stuff going on around here as well. Oh, Trevor? You know, I heard Trevor's hair went white overnight. And nobody knows why. Mm-hmm. That's why. He's that young boy that was the, 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 the delivery boy at the grocery store. Uh-huh. No, I'm not taking notes. I wouldn't do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, you know, there was that thing between everybody kept saying that him and Carol, you know, they were hoo-hoo. Uh, that's what I heard. Um, there was no proof, but, you know, he sure didn't make a lot of special deliveries to her house, if you know what I mean. 
No, I mean, he was actually taking deliveries over there, but it just seemed a little strange to me that he was over there so frequently. I mean, who needs that much stuff from the grocery store? She doesn't even eat anything hardly. She eats like a bird, but it's a corset, though. You know, she wears a corset. She cinches it up extra tight. Yeah, I'd hate to be around when she lets it out. But, uh, no, well, you know, you know, John and Deanna were the new neighbors, right? Well, they moved in over there, that young couple. They mostly kept to themselves. Well, let me tell you what happened the other night. The other night, I was out on the porch minding my own business. Just, I was just relaxing in the rocking chair with my binoculars, and I just happened to be peering over there. And all of a sudden, there was this bright flash of light up in the sky. There was a thing. It looked like a disc, and there was a bright light, and it was blinding. It was blinding, I'm telling you. I had not taken some of my special pills. I was out there, and this is what I saw. It's a bright light right over at their house. And then after that, they were just gone. Like, they're, no, they're gone. They are too gone. I told you I hadn't taken any of my special pills. I was out there relaxing, minding my own business with my own binoculars, and that's what I saw. Howard does not believe me. You quit looking out that window at her. You don't need another wipe. You quit quit drooling. Trixie's walking up the street with her poodle. I don't know which one is more trashy, her or the dog. Do you see what she does to that dog? You know she puts hair dye on it. Yeah, she does in that rhinestone studded collar she puts on it. She even had little high heels on it the other day. I felt sorry for it. She's, she just sashays up and down the street. Quit drooling. Wipe your chin. And I'm not even talking about the baby, Howard. I'm talking about you. Well, thank you for keeping it quiet. Why don't you go back over there and see if you can get somebody to take that baby? I think he's enjoying keeping the baby quiet. Well, Howard, I never would have thought it of you. How come you're not like that with the dogs? How come you're not like that with me? He said he got all of his experience dealing with me. Howard, I don't like you anymore. I don't like you. No, John and Deanna were just gone. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, nobody has seen them since that night. Now, that was four nights ago, and nobody has seen them since. They're just completely gone, okay? I, I about had a conniption fit. I didn't know what to think about that. I about fell out of my chair. I held on to the binoculars, though. They were just gone. It's like they disappeared, and I think it had something to do with that bright light. Well, I, I don't know, but now that they're out of the house, you know, that was Carol's house. Well, if they're not there anymore, she can just move in, and I don't know what she'd do to me. Okay, well... Let me, let me tell you, let me, I can't stop thinking about Carol. I got Carol on the mind. You know she doesn't like me. And she never invited me to her parties. I don't care. I don't want to go anyway. It's probably just a bunch of hooligans anyway. A bunch of weed and wacky things going on. And I, di I didn't want to be a part of it anyway not interesting to me so let me tell can I can I please tell you about my my opportunity here I am a representative for a new company that offers you exotic trips yes you too can be an exotic world traveler you can go to faraway places such as Poughkeepsie Tulsa Des Moines that's you can be a world traveler for only $49 for three exciting nights. And you might ask, Gertrude, how can they do it for such a low price? Well, the company is known as Trippin' Hard, and that's the hard part is that you have to get yourself there. But once you're there, you can avail yourself of some luxury motel accommodations. They have indoor toilets and running water and carpet in some of the rooms. Yeah, the beds fold out 
for a night of comfort. Does this sound exciting? Might I sign you up? Maybe we could get together over some coffee and talk about it. Before you decide, let me let me tell you that you can choose from two of two exciting gifts. The first gift is a woven basket made by a local craftsman. It is quite lovely. And as a special perk, if you do take the lovely basket inside, I will put some of my special meatloaf. Yes, that's an extra bonus for me, just from ordering from me and letting me set it up. I will put some of my special meatloaf in here with some of my special herbs in it. Yes, I know a lot of people complain that the meatloaf just makes them more hungry. That's why I'm going to give you twice as much. So you have the special herbs and then you can have another big helping of, of uh, meatloaf because it does seem to make people extra hungry. I don't know why. It just helps me sit and relax. I don't especially get hungry. But I'm going to include that in your woven basket if you choose that. If not, I have a, sec a second offer for you. A special headband made of French lace and suede. It is made from the some of the wire on my back fence post that I had to remove when a goat knocked it down. It is a very beautiful exclusive item. I only have a few because the goat only damaged a small part. And if you act today, I might consider giving you both since no one has agreed to do it yet. Can I put you down for one? Which city would you love to visit first? What other cities do we have? Um, let me look. Well, uh, uh, okay. There is Troy, Michigan. That's exotic. That's up near some lakes and stuff. You could maybe go sailing. Uh, no. How about Salt Lake City? I bet you've never been there. And if you've never been there, then it has to be exotic. No, well, you think it over now. Well, thank you for letting me know about that. Linda, I really appreciate it. I had no idea. Have you heard any more? I mean, when did this happen? Oh, that is scary. That is so scary. Hey, you know what? Maybe Beulah has some more information. Let me call her, okay? Okay, all right. Bye. Howard, what am I going to do? I'm sweating bullets. I'm glistening like a pig. Oh, I know you're not worried. You're over there checking out the women walking down the street like... Arlene, get off of here. Something terrible has happened. I don't even want to tell you because you don't want to buy an exotic trip from me. Can you give me the whole pan of fudge? How big is it again? Okay, well, let me tell you what Linda just told me. Carol broke out of jail. I don't know. I thought they had sent her to the big prison up upstate. She was still in the Camden jailhouse, and she got out. I'm afraid she's going to come get me. That's the same thing Howard said. I do not think the whole world revolves around me. But she didn't like me. She never invited me to her parties. Even you got invited. No, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that even you got invited. Okay, I, I heard, I hear it. I, I know it sounds bad. I didn't mean that. I'm not myself right now. Do not expect me to understand myself. You cannot hold me responsible for what I say when my life is in jeopardy. It is too. Well, all I know is she didn't think I was worthy of an invitation to her party. But maybe I am worthy to an invitation to death. lot you know yeah it's because of you all my it's because of you all my tomato plants are dead you you told me to put kerosene on them that's what she said it was a joke well thanks to you i took you seriously i won't take you seriously anymore all my tomato plants died yes it killed all the little aphids on them but it killed the plants as well so I don't even have any tomatoes this summer. I'm going to have to 
See if anybody else has got any. If I can have the whole pan of fudge, I'll tell you. Oh, the other little bit of stuff I had to tell you? Well, that's nothing compared to this. Yeah, so Erling, listen. No. Yeah, she broke out of jail, and they have not caught her yet. That's all I know. And she may be headed this way right now, and if we have locks on our doors, I want to get Howard to lock them tonight. Can you check and see if our doors have locks on them? I'm beside myself. Do you need anything? Well, I'm just thinking I might need to raise more money than I thought I did. I, I, may, I may need to hire a, a security guard or get me some meaner looking dogs. I mean, these little poodles aren't going to do anything except liquor to death. I mean, they just lick her ankles and smile at her with the sweet faces they have. I mean, they're not exactly vicious. <sighs> So she broke out of jail. And you know what else? You, 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 remember, you remember the new neighbors over there, John and Deanna? Well, the other night, I was sitting on the porch minding my own business in the rocking chair. Yes, I had my binoculars. I was just casually looking at everybody's windows. And all of a sudden, there was this thing. And it came up. And there was this blinding light. And it shined down from the thing on their house. And then they were just gone. Now, I don't know if it was related to the light, but they were, John and Deanna are just gone. Like, they're just gone. Well, their car's gone, too. So, but I think it has something to do with that light. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they, maybe they had some dealings with something. I don't know what it was. I don't know. Maybe there was a rapture and we all didn't make it. I have no idea. Well, maybe they did drive off somewhere, Howard. You're so smart. You should know. He's always trying to play detective and figure everything out before me. It's like a competition. Hold on a minute. Will you just go back over to Ellen's and see if she's back yet? Take that baby over there. I don't care if they want it or not. Like, just pry open a window and see if you can hand it to one of the other ones then. Take it on over there. I don't know which one it is. It probably needs a diaper or something by now. I mean, you know, give it something to drink or... What do you do with them? Do you water them? I don't know. What do you feed them? I don't, I don't have anything here to feed them. I got some dog food, but it probably... Probably not good for the baby. I, I, maybe if you mash it up in some milk or something. I don't know what to do with it. Just take it back over there. No, I still have the baby. I can't seem to get rid of it tonight. Well, okay, well, with them gone and Carol out of jail, I don't know what's going on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Somebody's waving in my window. There's a funny looking man waving in my window. No, he's gone. Kind of a strange looking man. He had on a hat and a suit. He is a funny looking man. I don't know who it was. That makes me uneasy. I wish Howard had come back now. Well, I think he's gone. Anyway, no, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm a little concerned. So keep your eyes open for, for you know, just keep on the lookout for her. Because she may try to come back. And if she does, she may come ask you about me. Because she knows she didn't like me and she didn't... I'm not, I didn't say the whole world revolved around me, now did I? I didn't say any of those words. You and Howard did. But if she comes asking about me, you don't tell her anything. She never invited me to anything. And as far as I know, I'm the only neighbor she didn't invite anywhere. And that's got to make me special. So I think she's gunning for me. That's probably why she broke out of jail to start with. Okay. Well, get off of here. Get off of here. T tell your brother to go lay down and wrap his legs up in some in some cloth or something and get bring the swelling down. And yeah, some mentholate him for that cough wouldn't hurt. Maybe yeah, some little little sip of whiskey probably wouldn't either. Now get off of here. All right, bye.
Barbara. Hey, it's Gertrude. Oh, you just talked to Linda. Okay. What? No, she told me all about that. I know. Isn't it strange? It's just so strange. How did she do it? She tied all of her panties together. She tied her panties together into a rope. And she shimmied out the window. How in the world did she fit through there? She had a file. Hold on a minute. Howard's back. She had a file. No, a file, like a metal file, not a paper file. It wasn't a paper file. No, a metal file. And she got, she used it to cut the bars on the window, and she shimmied down on her panties. No, not like a slide, like she made a rope out of her panties. That's not funny. I still don't like her. I still don't like her. I don't care how ingenious that is. I don't like her. So... I just think that's lousy. So that's how she got out. Did she leave her panties there? She's running around with no panties. <laughs> okay, well, you keep your eyes open. I want everybody in this neighborhood looking for that little trollop because I don't want her coming over here. Okay, well, I'm going to be on the lookout for her little blonde-headed self. Bottled blonde. Okay, well, listen, Barbara, while I have you on the phone, let me tell you about the exciting... Oh, Linda already told you. Well, look, you could take a wonderful trip. It, it's an exciting new company. It's called Trippin' Hard. And you, let, let me explain. You go to one of these exciting destinations. You can go to Des Moines, Salt Lake City, uh, Poughkeepsie, many exotic locations for three illustrious, is it illustrious? Three fantastic nights. And as a bonus, you can get a woven basket with some of my special meatloaf in it. Yes, it has the herbs. Yeah. Don't touch this, Howard. This is for me. You can't have my meatloaf. Uh-uh. This is my special meatloaf. Remember what happened last time you ate it? Yeah. I had to go dig you out of the flower patch. Yeah, you can't have any more. Well, it, 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 has an, it has an effect on Howard. Yeah, he becomes very reflective. And then he, he goes and he, he digs a hole out in the garden. And he kind of buries himself in it like a mole. And he lays there and he looks at the stars. And he talks about, you know, he talks about the universe and stuff. It's just not good because then I have to bring him in and hose him down like a big elephant. Yeah, it's probably best if you just stick with the salad tonight. You get a special dose of my meatloaf, and I'm going to give you an extra dose because it seems to make most people hungry. Or, if you're not interested in the basket, you can go for a beautiful, unique headband with French lace and suede made of pieces of our back fence that was busted out by a goat. It's a very unique piece, very artistic. I made it myself. Very, very beautiful. It would get you many compliments in your pretty hair. So what city would you like to visit first? Uh, uh, well, no. Uh, Paris is not on here, unfortunately. Tripping hard cannot go that far. Um, you have to stay in a landlocked... You have to be in the continental U.S. at this time, I am afraid. Okay, well, think about it. That's what everybody's doing. Everybody's thinking about it. Maybe if you had some of my special meatloaf, you could think a little better. And we could go ahead and get you signed up. Why don't you come get you some? And I will, I will sit with you while you eat it, and then we will fill out the paperwork. Does that sound good? Come on over for dinner tonight. I have extra. I have plenty. And we can sit and have some special meatloaf. And just forget about all this this madness with Carol, and, and maybe everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really worried because I know, I know she, uh, she was fixated on me to the point, well, I think inviting everybody but me makes her fixated. Yeah. I just, I just don't think it's fair is all. Well, anyway, she needs to pay for what she did. So I am upset with her for that. You don't get to go kill a whole backyard full of people and they just shimmy out of the, the jail cell. And they run around with no underwear. Of course, knowing her, it's not the first time she's run around without underwear. 
Okay, well, I will. Come on, what time are you? do you want to come by? That would be perfect. Can you? Hold on. Howard, why do you still have that baby? Well, sit in another place at the table. Yes, I know. Barbara's coming over, and we're going to have special meatloaf. Well, if you can get rid of that baby in time, I might consider letting you have some, too. Okay. Take it on over there and, and give it to somebody. Okay? Or just tie it to the porch. Do something with it. You don't want to tie it to the porch? He didn't. I'm stuck with one of Ellen's kids, and I don't know which one it is. It's either Charlene, Darlene, Marlene, or Carlene. I don't know. I am not looking for a birthmark. Mm-mm. No, I'm not I'm not looking anywhere for a birthmark. Well, if you're going to keep it here, go get one of my old dishcloths. You're going to need to change its diaper. Okay? And we'll take we have to take it back before dinner because I'm not having it around my special meatloaf because I am not going to be in charge of what happens after that. You come on over. I got my pen ready and we will go over all that paperwork after we have dinner. All right, great. I will see you then. This is exciting. I might get a sale yet, Howard. And then we can get the money and fix that fence. Well, that sounds wonderful. Okay. All right, I'm going to get everything ready. We're going to get a place ready. And we will just forget about horrible old Carol. She's, well, she's just a little tart anyway. I don't think she's anything to really worry about. <laughs> 